my day. Oh, I'd say it's still quite a building. Now, the McMill building was initially called the Federal Building. We called it that because it was given to us, or built, um, thanks to uh, money that we got from the federal government. A hundred thousand dollars came to the Norfolk community to build that building. President Roosevelt himself signed the paperwork to make an arrangement so that we could have it here. People came down from 11 counties for their federal court cases right here in this building. And then in 1903, we expanded it. We actually duplicated it. It's a mirror image on the north of what was originally built on the south. You can see the seam right up there. And then if you look, you can always remember it was 1903 when we did that improvement. Because right above the door there, it says in Roman numerals, 1903. You see there in the Roman numerals, that is how you know. If you look at it right there, it looks like the word McMill. That's how we started calling it the McMill Building. And stopped calling it the Federal Building. After 1903 there, they started calling it the McMill Building. Of course, the Federal Courthouse was on the second floor in the judges' chambers, and then the post office was down on the first floor for many, many years. So good to see that that is still here and being kept up. Yeah. Of course, in my yeah. early days, we didn't have many brick buildings. Most of them were made of wood. In fact, the first building that that I helped build or was in with that was was my father's hotel. When we got here in 1874, we lived in a simple shack out in the hills that father had built. It was a simple one room with nothing but a loft. There was one door, one window on the north one window on the south, and a simple door to the east. The closest thing that we called it a kitchen, actually what it was, was a dry goods box that we had set up on its side, out in front of the door, and there was a simple wood stove where we cooked all our dinners. How we didn't burn that simple shack down, I have no idea. But it was just the next year, mother insisted that we have a house in town. So father got land, and we built the first hotel right there on the corner where it says, McCleary building now. Now I remember when we cleared Father's Hotel and put the McCleary block up, but Father's Hotel was called the Elkhorn Valley Hotel. It was the first English sp speaking hotel here in town. And of course you guys remember about cowboy Relax Hale, do you not? Now in my time Relax Hale was, everyone knew about Relax. See he and his cowboys would come in every Saturday night. And you know what they would do? They would ride up and down Norfolk Avenue at breakneck speeds and they would shoot their pistols left and right so all the shoppers would have to dodge into the shops to keep themselves alive. It's quite disastrous. Fortunately, those cowboys were kind of like clockwork every Saturday night, so we knew when they were coming. But those demons, you know what else they would do? They would ask for father. Every Saturday, they would ask for the same room. And the reason they did that, down below was Mr. Meyer's dry goods store. Those cowboys hated Mr. Myers. Mr. Myers hated those cowboys for good reason. Because they would sit up in their room and they would shoot their pistols through the floor down into his store. And the poor man had to dodge under his dry goods counter with all of his supplies up on top just to keep himself alive. Mother always insisted that father should not rent to those cowboys. But they paid good and they would take care of damages. <laughs> you know, their biggest delight was also if the night was slow in town, what they would decide to do is they would take their mattresses and they would shoot their pistols to the mattress set fire. They'd throw it out the window into Main Street right there. Quite horrendous, those young men. I suppose that's how cowboys are, though. What fun they had. You know, Father was also a Methodist minister at the same time. He, at times, he was out at Warnerville here in Norfolk, and sometimes in Staten he preached for the Methodists. That in the hotel kept him quite, quite busy. But even that first year, we did get a house up. It was just straight down the block here. Of course, there weren't streets there. As I said, that was the end of the community, really, that street. So our house was just right down, right down the street. Now, that first year after I got here, I did teach school out in Stanton. It was quite an adventure. I walked two and a half miles every day to my schoolhouse where I put on my own fires and taught 20 rowdy pupils. Schoolroom teaching was not really for me, so that next year I opted to go off to college. I was Norfolk's first resident to go to college, by the way. If you didn't know, not the first female resident, so 
some people have been confused by that. I was the first resident of Norfolk to go away to college, period. Hmm. Very proud of that fact. It took me 10 years to finish my degrees, <laughs> but I paid for them myself. I used my money from that first year to pay for the first year of college, but then I came back and I took my own homestead where I raised chickens and corn until I had a sufficient funds to go back to Iowa and take another year of courses. As I say, it took me 10 years, but in the end, I graduated with degrees in history, philosophy, and music. It's a very proud time in my life to receive those degrees. And I've always felt it very passionately that I needed to give back to my community. And so when I moved back, I started forming, like I said, the Rebecca's, helped with the Odd Fellows, oh, and of course, the Daughters of the Revolution. <coughs> my great-grandfather fought in the Revolution under General Washington himself, I would say. And of course, here's the, oh my goodness, look, the mill is gone. <laughs> well, how do you survive without a mill? <laughs> now, the mill was the very lifeblood of our community. I cannot fathom this magic that you all have with these lights and these vehicles that travel around. I just cannot comprehend. Well, of course, I'm going to have to see if he'll let me out. I must get down and investigate. You know, we were in the park last night for the opening ceremonies, but 